We've looked at the rifle uh, in fair detail now, uh, so it's time to actually look at the 310 Cadet cartridge. Um, so this is the cartridge here. Um, it was originally designed by Greener, and it was called the 310 Greener, uh, but when it was adopted for use uh, by the cadets in Australia and New Zealand, it, uh, it's basically been renamed as the, uh, as the 310 Cadet. But if you see any reference to 310 Greener, it's the same cartridge. Now if you have a look at it quickly, um, it just looks like a small revolver cartridge really, uh, but if you look more closely you'll see that uh, unlike revolver cartridges which are straight walled, uh, it has a slight taper, rimmed case, slight taper, and then if you look very closely the last few millimetres of the case uh, actually have a tiny little neck it's more pronounced when you uh, when you size a case in the falling through sizing die, but there is a small neck that goes in. And the reason for that design of that case, that slight taper, is to it uh, ease extraction out of the out of the uh, the Martini rifle because um, because as we've said before, it's got very weak extraction. The 310 Cadet cartridge uh, is designed to use a heeled bullet, and that. That piece of information is crucial to understand if you want to successfully load for the 310 Cadet. Right, a normal shaped bullet uh, projectile, as most of you are probably familiar with, is shaped like that. And uh, when you put it into your cartridge case, the cartridge case is like that. So you've got the cartridge case and you've got a little step going down here and the projectile coming out from there. Now, and the, and the, the chamber of the, of the rifle is going to be designed to, uh, to accommodate that. In some cases, uh, in semi-auto pistols for example, the actual chamber has a step in it and that's actually what creates, when you've got a rimless case, that's what creates the, uh, the headspace of the cartridge. Now, in a heeled bullet, the bullet is shaped like this. Instead of coming straight back, it has, this is slightly exaggerated probably, it has a rebate here, so the di diameter across here is less than the di total diameter of the bullet. And what that means is when it's loaded into the case, What we end up with is an, a smooth side of the cartridge there with no transition. Now, this system was very popular uh, in the late 1800s. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, the first revolver cartridges, especially, which were developed by um, Smith and Wesson, um, used Hill's bullets. Uh, they were they were rimfire cartridges. Most of them are obsolete now, but uh, if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that at home in the cupboard you have a 22 rimfire rifle, 22 long rifle, and the 22 long rifle was developed in the 1880s, I think. Uh, it's basically the same shape today, and it still has a heeled bullet. So if you go to your cupboard, take out a cartridge, and you can generally grip them in your teeth and pull the, pull the projectile out of the case, you can actually examine and see what a heeled bullet looks like. Now you might be thinking at this point, what's the difference? Why can't I just buy some, get some normal uh, um, non-heeled projectiles and load them into my cases and fire in my rifle? Uh, now people do do that, um, and I did that initially, uh, but I never found it was very successful. And this is the reason. Now the, we've obviously got the bore of the rifle here, some rifling in it. The bore, the groove diameter of most cadets is about 0.318 to 0.321, somewhere in that in that range. So we say it's about uh, 0.320, which is about what mine is. Um, so that means to shoot. Uh, 
accurately, if anyone, anyone who's shot cast bullets will know that you really need to probably have your projectile about one to three thou oversize in looped cast bullets to shoot accurately. So that means we'd need, if we, if we say that our core size is 320, we'd probably need a 0.321 or 0.322 um, projectile to get the most accurate uh, shooting. Now, there is projectiles available. Uh, I'll talk about where to get them later on. Um, there are some companies here in Australia that actually make uh, projectiles which they market for the cadet, which are 0.316. Now, straight away you can see there's a problem there. Uh, this is going to be 2,000 under the groove diameter. It's probably going to be about bore diameter. So you're never going to get that a projectile of that size to shoot accurately. And that's what I found. Uh, when I first got my cadet, I bought a box of those, which I still have most of them in the cupboard. Um, loaded them up, um, and I sh it shot about four shot, four inch groups at uh, 50 meters. So just from my point of view, fairly hopeless. The other problem with this is once you've got your cases, um, you shove it into the case. Uh, the case is designed to have this this heel bullet like this so when you put your 316 projectile into the case you end up the case has to kind of accommodate it like that and then that has to go into the chamber here which is designed for a heel bullet uh, and in my experience with 316 projectiles maybe one in three or four wooden chamber. Uh, it's obviously a function of the thickness of the brass as well um, and fouling in the chamber etc but just the whole thing just didn't work. So um, so yeah we need bullets, we need projectiles of this general size um, but we need them to be able to go into the case and go into the chamber and the only way that you can do that is to actually use a heel projectile. Right, now at this point I'd like to touch on something that, just briefly, that um, is sort of relevant to what we've just been talking about, and that's rechambered rifles. I know in the United States especially, there's a lot of rifles chambered for 30, uh, 3240 Winchester um, and 3220 Winchester. Uh, here in Australia, the 3240s aren't so common, but there's a lot of 3220 Winchesters um, have been uh, were rechambered back, I think, in the 60s. Um, Sportco, one of the companies here who sold a lot of uh, rifles built on old actions, um, they actually uh, rechambered a lot of them. I know with the 3220, what they did when they rechambered, they didn't even take the barrel out. They just had the there's the falling falling block, the uh, chain, the receiver like that, the barrel, falling block comes down here, so you've got your, you've got your chamber, what they did was put a uh, special rod up the chamber to there, and they had a little reamer which was threaded, which they threaded onto the rod there, and then they pulled it backwards and twisted it in a drill, and actually just reamed out the chamber from 310 to 3220. They're very similar, very similar cartridges, so very little metal was removed. Um, but it deepened the uh, extractor, uh, the uh, room, uh, extractor groove in the barrel as well, so that the thicker rim of the 3220 would chamber. Uh, and then people could just go into a shop. 3220 has always been very popular here in Australia, uh, and buy 3220 cartridges and shoot it. And for a farm gun, that was probably not such a bad idea. Uh, rather than having to source 310 cartridges because if they were just using it to put down animals or shooting at very close range it was fine. But we come back to the same problem. Anyone who knows about 3220 knows that it shoots a 312 projectile. Um, so it's miles undersized when we're talking about 318 or 321 
um, in the 310. So miles undersized, so you're never going to get any decent accuracy. Now, if you've got one of these 3220s, all is not lost because there's no reason why you can't use one of the cadet heeled projectiles in it, so you're using the correct size projectile. Um, so you can get some heeled 320 or 321 um, projectiles. You may find they're a little bit loose, the heel may be a little bit loose in the case because the case is designed for these um, smaller um, smaller bullets, but, um, but you should be able to make it work. Now with the 3240, uh, I believe they are 0.321 nominal bore. So it's, it, the bore size is correct for the, thre for the thre um, 310. Uh, so yeah, that will work. Uh, the only problem is the 3240 is a very big, much more powerful cartridge than, uh, than the 310. So to maximise use of the 3240, you're going to be using much larger projectiles, um, which may not stabilise adequately uh, in the uh, in the 30 in the 310 barrel, or you're going to have to load it down because it's a very light little rifle and these things are kick like a mule, I think, with full power charge. You're going to have to load it down um, to, so you've, there's really no point having it. Uh, but if you've got one of these rifles, uh, that's fine. But uh, just be aware you can shoot uh, normal, normal 321, 320-odd uh, projectiles in it. Right, now, when you're uh, loading for an obsolete calibre, um, obsolete cartridge. The biggest problem is generally um, obtaining brass cases. Um, now, with the 310 Cadet, it's not impossible, but you do have to um, look around a bit. You, can't, you generally can't just go into like your local gun shop and buy 310 cases. Um, now, here in Australia, we're lucky. We've got a few different sources of, of cases. Uh, there is a company in Victoria and in Australia called Bertram who actually make a lot of obsolete brass cases and they make three ca 10 cadet cases, you can buy them new. Um, I know that there are uh, distributors for Bertram cases in the United States um, or you can buy them direct from Bertram so I'll, I'll give you their, uh, their direct uh, contact details. Um, now there's a Bertram case um, you'll see on the on the um, the base. Uh, I'm not sure if that will focus, but it says 310 Cadet uh, BB, which stands for Bruce Bertram. Um, now these are good cases. They're quite thick walled though, uh, and that's something that needs to be taken into account when reloading. Um, the wall of a Bertram case is generally around the <coughs> excuse me, uh, 0.09 inches um, thickness. So um, you just have to remember that. Uh, now here in Australia, back in the uh, in the 50s and 60s, uh, there was a company called the Super Cartridge. Company. The Super Cartridge Company um, made cartridges in a lot of popular calibres, uh, including um, the standard ones, but also some of the more unusual ones that were um, sort of unique to Australia, like the 310 Cadet and also things like the 25303 and uh, 270303, um, triple two rimmed for martinis as well. Um, now uh, there's a lot of super brass that they went, they stopped business back in the 1970s, but there are quite a lot of super cases uh, around um, around the place, uh, I've got them in. I've got several hundred. I've picked them up at gun shows. I've picked them up in throwaway stands at gun shops. Um, so if you're in Australia or New Zealand, that's that's an option. Um, another brand of case that you might see are Kynock cases. Uh, they're British made, British company that make cartridges. Um, now the early Kynock cases were actually burden primed, so unless you get a whole heap of them and you're going to go through the process of burden priming, uh, they're probably not worth worrying about. Later ones though were boxer primed, so if you come across any Kynock cases, 
uh, then uh, look closely at the priming. And, and they're good cases if you can find some boxer ones. Um, now, the, the last option um, is, um, and as far as super cases go, I noticed in the latest uh, shooting magazine here, one of the big gun shops down in Brisbane is advertising super cases for a whole heap of different calibers like 577, 450 and triple two rimmed and 310. So I'm not sure if uh, possibly someone's even started making them again under the super name. Uh, so that's something to look for. The third option for um, obtaining cases, and it's quite a good option if, if it's possible in your case, is a uh, conversion of 3220 cases. Now, some 310 rifles will actually accept 3220 uh, cartridges, um, but most, the 3220 rim is, is thicker than a 310. So most 310 rifles, when you, when you try to chamber a 3220 cartridge, it won't chamber because the rim's too fat. Um, so one thing that you can do, if you know someone with a lathe or you've got one yourself, is to uh, have the uh, have the rim of the of a 3220 cartridge reduced in thickness um, to uh, the correct thickness for a 310. Now I don't have that off the top of my head, so I'll go and find that for you now. I just uh, measured the rim on this uh, Bertram 310 case and it's uh, 0.035 inches, um, whereas I think um, most 3220s up around the uh, 0.05 inches, so you just have to machine that little bit off the front of the rim. Um, then uh, they just need to be shortened a little bit. Now, if you look at these, uh, that's a standard Bertram case that hasn't been trimmed. Um, that's a super case that possibly has been trimmed. Uh, now with super cases, I've got several hundred as I said, and they come in all different lengths. They vary by, by quite a large amount. So I've tended to, rather than trim them all to the shortest case, I've tended to batch them. So it's very hard to find a, an exact case length, you know, specific case length for the 310. But um, if you look at that, the Bertram case and that super case are about the same same length. Um, I'll just measure that case with glasses. One point oh six nine, so one point oh seven inches. Um, so that's that's where you're looking at. Sort of, sort of 1.1 inches seems to be around the around the average length of, of 310 cases. Um, now I found with a bit of experimentation when I, I actually um, I don't have a lathe, uh, so I actually had a, 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 an acquaintance who had a lathe um, just do 10 cases for me. I didn't want to ask for too much because it's a bit time consuming, but I got them just to uh, convert 10. 3220 cases so that I could experiment and I tried um, tried full length, full length was a little bit long, the bullet was tended to go into the rifling, uh, but I found that um, trimming the case down to 1.2 inches, this case is exactly 1.2 inches, um, seems to be just about ideal. The, uh, the, the, this uh, projectile will be just back from the rifling a tad uh, and that's ideal for, for uh, accurate shooting. Um, the other benefit too, I think, is uh, I have fired, I have loaded these cartridges with black powder, and uh, just that extra 0.1 inch, as you can see, the difference difference in those two cartridges um, would give you that little bit extra um, cartridge capacity. So yeah, so if you've got a lathe and you've got plenty of time, I'd be going out buying 13220 cases, converting them to this. Now, if you want. You might have a, a special case trimmer, but um, if you use the Lee system with a little collets, collet and, and um, cutter, uh, that's what I've got, um, you can buy the trim, um, trim collet for the 327 Federal Magnum revolver cartridge, uh, which is exactly, that, that cartridge is exactly, case is 1.2 inches long, so you can buy that, that trimming collet and you can trim all your cases easily and quickly to 1.2 inches. So that's just a little 
a little trick that you, you might want to know about. Um, now we'll talk about cases a little bit more when we talk about projectiles and that's what we're going to talk about next. Speak about projectiles uh, for reloading your 310 Cadet. Uh, now we've decided that we need a healed projectile so the choice is uh, not very great I'm afraid. Uh, if you're in North America I'm sure there's custom mould makers there who would make you uh, a mould uh, for healed projectile for your 310. Uh, but I'll just speak about uh, the choices that uh, I have here and, um, and, uh, and that you uh, might always also consider. Now as far as I'm aware there's actually only one uh, bullet manufacturer that makes a bullet for the uh, heel bullet for the 310 Cadet. Uh, they're called the Hawkesbury Bullet Company, they're in New South Wales in Australia. Uh, I'll have all the details on the screen for you. Now, if you go to their website, uh, they've actually got a tab for 310 Cadet, go to that. Um, they actually list three bullets for the 310 Cadet, but you'll note that two of them are 316 non heel design. And as I've already discussed, I don't recommend going down that road. But they do have a one heel design uh, for a, uh, I think it's a 320 bullet uh, with a uh, 314 healed base uh, and they're widely used. I, I, haven't, I have no personal experience because I've always moulded my own bullets but I have been to cadet shoots where people are using those uh, and, uh, and they do quite well. Uh, and I will talk about the comparison between that and, uh, and moulding your own bullets. Uh, there's a company here in Australia called Cast Bullet Engineering. Um, now it was um, started by a gentleman about <coughs> 20 or 30 years ago. He uh, he had a Martini Cadet Cadet rifle, and he wasn't able to get uh, projectiles for it. And he was um, a tool maker or an engineer of some type. Uh, so he uh, he made his own mould and um, designed his own projectile and made the mould for it. Then of course he knew some other people who had cadets and they asked him if he'd make them a mould, which he did and then it went from there, word got out on the grapevine and uh, so he started doing it part time, making moulds. Uh, and then long story short he ended up uh, opening a company uh, specialising in um, uh, semi-custom bullet moulds and he makes all sorts of bullet moulds for both obsolete type um, type. Um, cartridges and also uh, more mainstream. So um, now this uh, here is uh, a projectile that I moulded um, in my mould. Uh, this is a traditional round nose healed design. It's about 120 grains uh, and the um, if you were to order this from them, the model is called the 320-120. Um, I've got the mould here to show you. So there we go. Um, I'm not sure if that will focus, but um, you can see it says 310 Cadet, uh, and it's got the CBE uh, logo below it. Solid brass mould, as you can see, big thick sprue plate. Um, and um, really nice, nice mould. Now, um, unless you're really averse to moulding, I would suggest that if you want to shoot your 310 Cadet, you're best to uh, get yourself one of these moulds and mould your own projectiles. Um, you can sit down for a couple of hours and you can mould hundreds of them, probably enough to last you for years. Uh, that mould, I think, cost me, I bought it about three or four years ago, it cost me about $140 Australian posted to my letterbox. I think they're about $120. <clears throat> so um, even if you're in North America, uh, you, could, um, you could order one and uh, it's probably going to be less than $200 and I'm sure that will be much less than, uh, than getting a custom mould made over there. Um, and I can tell you right now that these uh, the bullets from this mould are extremely accurate. Now, one thing you need to think about is if you're uh, if you're reloading for Bertram brass, you have to think about the diameter 
of the heel on the bullet and I alluded to this when I was talking about the Hawkesbury bullets. Now the heel on this, these projectiles is 0.314 um, and using super cases which I've said have quite a thin wall or convert, Kynock or converted um, Winchester 3220 cases uh, this is just about the ideal uh, heel size. Um, you can pu um, push it, it's a pressure push to push it into the case uh, which when we get to the reloading section I'll talk about. However this projectile is really too fat to, um, to use in Bertram cases with their thicker walls. Um, now uh, I've, I've read on the net that people who are using Hawkesbury, the Hawkesbury uh, Bullet Company projectiles which also have a 0.314 heel are having to, um, to seat them in the case and then actually um, use a die to swage them down a little bit to get them to chamber. So uh, if you're using Bertram cases, Cast Bullet Engineering have another mould uh, which is called a 320-120R, capital R, stands for reduced and it has a reduced diameter heel, it's about 0 0.310. Um, and uh, and that they're specifically designed to be used with um, thick walled Bertram brass. So there's something else to keep in mind. <coughs> um, so um, Cuspel Engineering have, have about, if you look on their website, they've got about half a dozen different mould designs for the 310, but just for general shooting, if you're starting off, this 320, 120R is probably uh, a good one to start. So um, we've come down to uh, the choice, really, if you're going to shoot your cadet, of either getting a correct mould, like the Cuspel Engineering one, or from uh, some other mould manufacturer, but you need to get a correctly proportioned healed bullet mould, um, or uh, buy healed bullets from uh, Hawkesbury uh, River Bullet Company. Now, the Hawkesbury River Bullets, um, if you look on the site, there's only they've got two designs, um, but uh, <coughs> only one of them. Uh, is actually a healed 310. I think it's a 120 uh, three grain um, 323 with a 314 heel. Uh, you'll see it comes. They have these copper hawks and black hawks and silver hawks. All that is is just the uh, the proprietary kind of coating that they've put on them. The black ones are just a standard um, sort of I don't know. It's a molly or some sort of coating. Um, the uh, copper ones are for high velocity, over 2200, so I don't think that's necessary. And the silver ones are just, I think, a similar coating to the black ones, but they're silver in colour just so that if you're doing more for Western action, so that they look uh, traditional. Um, however, one other thing we've got to talk about is bullet uh, alloy. Now, um, obviously, if you're moulding your own, you can, uh, you can choose your own alloy, um, but um, the, uh, the Hawkesbury ones are um, like most um, hard cast bullets are made out of a very hard uh, high antimony um, um, alloy and um, and uh, the cast bullet engineering um, have done some um, some tests where they've looked at bullets um, projectiles after they've been fired and um, they found that they actually swage to the bore, so um, I'll just go to the whiteboard and I'll, I'll explain that a bit more. So gas bullet engineering have found that um, uh, if we look at the, uh, there's your bore, um, and you've got your healed, healed bullet, something like that, moving up the bore, with pressure, pressure behind it. Um, they found that the best accuracy is obtained with using a fairly soft alloy. Um, now, I use uh, one part um, tin uh, in uh, one part in 20 lead. Um, and, um, and so what happens is the, uh, as the pressure is on the back of the projectile here, it ends up swaging it, so as it goes down the bore, it ends up 
no longer having the heel. So you haven't got the gases coming in behind here um, and possibly upsetting the accuracy. Um, so that's one problem. If you buy the if you buy the heel bullets from Hawkesbury, they're going to be hard cast, and you're not going to have this swaging process occurring. Um, now, um, if you're going to use your rifle for hunting, um, especially smaller game, then um, this is probably a benefit because these bullets, the bullets that I use in mine, are very soft. Um, now I've never actually hunted with them, I must admit, but I think you would uh, you would get quite good um, good mushrooming uh, in, in a hunting situation. Um, I did find, however, that um, uh, up to about 12.50 feet per second, um, uh, I've got really good accuracy. But once uh, you can load the, I can load the cadet up to around the kind of 1500 probably max, 1450 to 1500. Um, but with the uh, the soft um, soft alloy uh, in the cast model engineering, uh, once you got up up over about the 13, 12, 15, 1300 feet per second mark, accuracy dropped off a little bit. I mean it wasn't bad. It probably if you were shooting medium sized game, small pigs or um, wallabies or whatever. Um, it would still be adequate, um, but I did notice a little bit of leading in the ball when I cleaned the ball. So, and that's to be expected if you're shooting a soft lead bullet up at these velocities. So, if you wanted to load your 310 with um, with uh, moulded bullets um, for sort of medium game, well then you probably would be going to a to a harder alloy um, and using it up at these sort of velocities. Um, so as far as lubrication go, uh, goes, um, uh, I follow the advice of cast bullet engineering uh, in these, these loop bullets and uh, I use um, a reasonably heavy uh, coating of Lee uh, liquid alox. So if you're familiar with that, um, um, it uh, just comes in a little bottle, you can get it just about in any gun shop and uh, you just put your bullets in a plastic container, give it a bit of a squirter on the top and then close the lid and and uh, tumble them around till they've got a coating. If you don't think it's thick enough, you stick a bit more on. And then you just put them out on a bit of wax paper or whatever and uh, let them dry overnight. Um, and, uh, and they get that sort of brown coating. These bullets do have a single loop groove, so if you really wanted to, you could, uh, you could, you could put them through a loop sizer and, um, and use, um, use uh, stick lube. Uh, but uh, the, the um, Lee Liquid Alox does seem to work really well. So, um, now the next thing I'll talk about is powders. One thing I forgot to mention was that uh, with the uh, cast bullet engineering moulds, um, when you buy the mould you just get the mould block, um, but they're actually designed to use just standard Lee, Lee handles. So uh, wherever you are, um, you can either get a set of Lee handles or um, if do what I did, I had some Lee dies, uh, Lee moulds, sorry, which um, I didn't use very much, so I just uh, took the handles off the blocks and used them on this. Um, now, uh, on the website, the Castle Engineering website, uh, if you um, click on the 310 part, it gives you a full uh, rundown of all the different mould designs and so talks about reduce here what sort of cases so have a good look down there and decide uh, what mold uh, you think would suit you uh, the other thing you can do is if you click on downloads there's a list of downloads that they've got on the website there's several downloads about the 310 there's a 310 overview uh, and then there's uh, two full articles from New Zealand guns and hunting magazine uh, about uh, loading for the 310 Gadet and part two uh, you'll see uh, it was actually written by myself. So, um, and in that article, there's actually a loading table. So, um, uh, it you only uses ADI powders, Australian Defence Industries, uh, Australian made powders, uh, because that's what I tend to use, because they're the ones that are always available, whereas a lot of the American made powders, um, when you go to get them a second time around or you're looking for them, you can't get them. So. I've tended to just stick for um, stick to ADI powders, 
uh, if, as you'll see if you read so, the article. Um, if you're from North America and you're either reading the article on the CBE website or watching this, um, and uh, I'm talking about some of these ADI powders that doesn't mean anything, um, as you're probably aware, you can get these um, uh, powder equivalent charts, the approximate burn, uh, similar burn rates of different powders from the different manufacturers. Um, there'll always be a warning that you know it's not exact and it can vary with the conditions and whatever, but gives you a pretty good uh, indication. Um, so if you get onto the ADI website, ADI powders, just Google ADI powders, get onto the ADI website and get their powder equivalent chart, this one here, uh, and uh, um, print it out. Um, so any powders that I talk about, uh, there will be um, similar powders uh, from the other manufacturers. Um, now, uh, I'll just go to the whiteboard now. Right, so, so when I did uh, some load working up um, to create uh, what I thought was the, uh, the best 310 loads, um, I used powders ranging from um, ADI, so we'll, we'll, we'll do an abbreviated chart here. Um, they seem to be available here, I've never used them, but um, um, so I actually did, lo I loaded um, cartridges from with AP70, um, AP90, AP100 and AR2205. Now, um, AP to P is pistol, AP is Australian pistol, I think, um, and AR is rifle. Um, the pistol powders uh, are what most people use to load the cadet, and in fact, when I've um, been to cadet shoots, it seems like most people, the most common load that people are using, um, especially the people that use the, uh, the Hawkesbury River projectiles, is they use about three and a half grains or something of AP70. Um, which is a medium pistol powder um, and reckon it works great. And now when I was working out my loads, I, I, I loaded some of that up and I tried it and it worked okay, so there's nothing wrong with doing that. Some people were even using AP50, which is a reasonably fast pistol powder and reckon it was all right. So, and again, you know, as long as you're within pressures and everything, um, that's fine. Now, if you look at the, um, uh, ADI reloading website or the paper book that they put out. The only loads that they actually show are, I think it's about nine grains of 2205, which is a, which is a fast rifle powder. Now, I've tried 2205 and what happens is you get a lot of unburned powder left in the chamber in the barrel. Uh, accuracy isn't fantastic because I think they're just it doesn't build up enough pressure to burn the powder and so your pressure is a bit all over the place. So, um, so I mean there's nothing, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong if that's what you do, that's fine. Um, but I think this one's just a little bit too slow. Now, Hodgdon, if, you, if you've got Hodgdon powder, that's um, AP, uh, it's H227 and uh, 4227, sorry, 4227. Now, I know for a fact that H4220 in Hodgdon is actually Australian made AR2205 that's just been repackaged and sent to North America. Um, <coughs> but again, I think that's too, too slow. Um, AP70 is a pistol powder, I use that in my 357 um, for just sort of standard sort of loads. Um, so I sort of figured, well, when you're shooting with a 20, you know, 24, 25 inch barrel or whatever that cadet's got, um, it's probably a bit fast. I think it's probably all being burnt up in the first couple of inches. Um, so I sort of figured, well, we need to be using something in between those two. Um, now, I, some years back, I actually bought a tin of AP90, um, which isn't even on this list because it became obsolete about 10 years ago. 
um, but I've still got a tin of it. Um, and that's in about here, it's just a bit, a bit, uh, a bit faster than AP100, so AP90 is probably similar to, um, uh, where are we, so maybe 800X, 800X, um, or WAP, or N340. Now, I obviously don't suggest you just kind of get my loads out of the article and, and replace them with that, but if you're going to do some load workups, they may be some powders to try. Um, look at the AP Light 90 loads in that uh, article, uh, which you can download from the, um, from the CBE website, uh, and then, you know, start a bit lower and, and try some loads uh, with these powders. Um, the other powder that's still available is AP100, which is slightly slower than AP90, um, and there's nothing really, uh, IMR SR4756, SR4756, so maybe you can get that and try it, um, because AP70 is uh, sort of similar to Unique, which you can also get here usually. I've used Unique in the past. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and it's also called Universal, Hodgkin Universal. And in fact, again, it's another one of these. It's actually made in Australia and it's marketed by Hodgkin in North America as Universal. So if you want to try AP70, just get some Universal or you can use some Unique. Um, so yeah, I think th this is the range of powders you want to be using, and I'd be using this this uh, here. Um, <coughs> so um, yeah, just um, load some load some cartridges up, start low, and go up by maybe 0.2 grains, which is what I did. Um, five shots at a time, had them all marked in the case. Now, <coughs> in all my shooting, um, <coughs> I found the most accurate, um, most accurate load was using AP90, which of course is the obsolete powder, but you only use a few grains for it, so I've still got enough to last me quite a number of years, I think. Um, and uh, and then the AP100 was quite good too. So. Um, so if you're going to work up some loads, um, that's uh, that's what I'd that's they're, they're the sort of powder range burning ranges that I'd suggest. So download this sheet um, from that, from the ADI website, like I said. So you've got the full full thing. Um, have a look at the uh, my loading loading table uh, in the um, on the website, and then uh, and then work up your load yourself. And you can do that whether you're using the uh, the mould of projectiles or you're using Hawkesbury River ones because they're about the same weight. So um, primers, just normal small rifle primers, 